Good evening, Plymouth. Now this is real. It's not Zoom or anything. I put my clothes on especially for you guys and everything. Now, I'm going to be 35 soon. Now, some of you look shocked. It's obviously that I've got youthful good looks. Or you know that I'm dyslexic. Because <laughs> I'm going to need a hell of a blowjob on my birthday to blow out 53 candles. <laughs> Can you actually make a wish if you use a headway? Mm. But it does remember. You might remind me, you remember? To be the sex you're all kicking in there. I haven't done this for ages. It does remind me of my brother's sixth birthday. Mum told him to blow the candles out. Unaware that he'd just taken a big mouthful of Smarties. Jack's already ahead of me. All over the cake, the kids, everything and everywhere. And that is how my brother helped invent Pepper Dash. <laughs> now it can be very confusing and interesting being dyslexic. Because as you see, I'm not too sure ever what I'm going to say or see. And the other day, I walked into a cafe, and it's true, asked for an LGBT sign. <laughs> now fortunately, they gave me a BLT with a small pot of bread. <laughs> I went to a park, and bought some fat food for the ducks, Go to a pharmacist to pick up my own description. <laughs> and I visited a whack to pay a check in. And I saw a sign that said, It's the bank that keeps you happy. Now I'm not too sure that they were very happy with the small deposit I left them in the corner. <laughs> but it's probably better than using the hole in the wall. <laughs> Now this rule of six really screwed my head up because I kept seeing and hearing it as the rule of sex. So under government guidance, I joined an adult dating site. Oh yes, I did. And in the profile, I wrote I had a 51 centimetre long dick. Now I got loads of requests for a dick pic. To which I had to reply, sorry for any incontinence caused, it should have been 15 centimetres. That's six inches in old money. Well, I was having a bit of a shit day. But on the plus side, I did arrange to meet a couple of the girls. I came across one in the park, but she said that was a bit premature. Oh, come on, you must have seen that coming! Now the same money can't buy happiness. But it can pay for a divorce. Whee! <laughs> now brace yourselves if you're if you're any Cornish or Devonian people, just brace yourselves. You can't tell, but I'm actually of mixed race. I'm half Devonian and half Cornish. Which means I can put the cream on the top. Oh, I'm the bottom! Woohoo! And it's a scone until it's gone. Now, I've been, as I'm getting older, I'm kind of reflecting on my childhood. And looking back, by rights, I should be dead. Along with most of my friends. We spat in the eyes of health and safety. We just didn't know at the time. I mean, you don't look at, none of you look like you grew up in the 70s or 80s at all. No, I'll give you a bit of scenario. Our mums kicked us out at 8am in the morning and wouldn't expect us back till 5pm for tea. Now, anything could have happened. Absolutely anything. Admittedly, they did give us a 10 pence piece so that we could use it in the cool emergency, which we all duly spent on comics, drink, and crisps. Because if there had been an emergency, we would have dialed 999 and reversed the charges. 
We threw down slides head first and hoped we had enough momentum to miss the concrete landing pad. We jumped off rope swings into polluted rivers and ponds. We climbed up trees and it didn't really matter if you got a cut and bled all over your fourth generation hand-me-down clothes. It just meant you had to go home and have a TCP bath. On our Northern Bath Night? No! Asbestos, every school had some. And PhD chemicals were a degree or two above anything you can get these days. And as toddlers, we had toxic worms on Earth. So by the rules of DC Comic or Marvel, we should all be superheroes. Or mutants. Maybe we are. We didn't have seatbelts back then. And no matter how many times I wished for it, on my birthday, my brother never ended up flying for the pit <laughs> On days out with family friends, I'll be putting the boot in the car with the dog and another kid. The dog will start humping one of you much to the amusement of the cars that were following. But we were unaware of the biggest threat that we faced. And we were exposed to that on a daily basis. The BBC pedophile. Jimmy certainly fixed it for himself. <laughs> Can't click every trip. Certainly means something completely different now. And two of them boys had two of them kids. I bet they did, Ralphie. Can you tell what it is yet? It's not so hard these days. Do you want to be in my gang, my gang, my gang? Do you want to be in my gang? Woo hoo! Absolutely not going on. Fuck off. Go away. No, just no. Not all that glitters is gold. Now I used to be a part time living statue. It was a stable job and provided me with a platform. <laughs> to help express myself. Boom! <laughs> Scaring the crap out of people. The dogs would take the piss and pigeons would give it a crap day occasionally. But I just saw it as a sign that I was doing a good job. It provided a steady income until the markets were toppled and they seem to have taken a complete dive since then. Now I've got to admit that lockdown has been good for my road rage because I've hardly managed to come. But I am suffering from other rages, like forest rage. I mean, the guy's done more twists and turns than Lulu. Polite rage. I mean, for God's sake, it's just two words. Thank you. Or you off the head if you've got a mask on. What is so fucking difficult about doing that way? Get out of your way in Tesco's eye. Is it too fucking much of a mouthful for you, you selfish fucking eager bastards? Road rage! Lycra dicks on fucking bikes! Will you please let me know that you're coming, especially when I've got my dogs with me? Ring your bells! Ring your fucking bells! Ring your bells! You are not in your BMWs now, you arrogant bankers! And don't even push me on scooter rage! I'm a new therapist! Just said I'm ranging. Let me know you really fucking angry, all my bloody eyes, and I fucking better get off stage soon because my blood pressure's gonna be too fucking much. You're gonna have to call an ambulance and there'll be some fucking wanker who's cool one because he's cut his finger, and it won't be fucking well available for me. So thank you very much, I'll keep going, I'm sure it's been a pleasure. <laughs> keep going, I'm sure it's been a pleasure. Good. I uh, what um, what did you miss most about lockdown when it happened? What did you miss most? Um, pubs. Pubs. Yep. Nice. What did you miss? Um, performing. Performing. Yeah. I miss work. <laughs> That's dark, isn't it? <laughs> no, I didn't. I uh, I I was lucky in work. I was lucky because you had a few gigs. Did you ever? Did you perform? What did you perform? Um, 
Funk trumpet. Funk trumpet. Right, we haven't got time to go into that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I think if I'm, that's a whole other gig, I'm going to really get into that. Um, I, uh, I, so our comedy, you know, obviously it went through, you know, a difficult time. So it meant that I, I was forced to rewrite my CV. Um, yeah, to look for some new work. So I thought, if I may, I might read it out for you now, if that's okay. So this is my CV. So this is my, it's all here. So this is my jobs um, in chronological order. Jobs I've done in chronological order. Okay, so first job, pot washer. Yeah, solid, good first job. Next job, promoted to trainee chef. Pot washer. <laughs> <laughs> Labourer. Lifeguard. Marketing officer. Marketing manager. Pot washer. <laughs> Canadian.